on the roof. So we got two units here that aren't working. This one's obviously either got a plug filter or a low charge. Head pressure is so low that the fan's not coming on. It does have a low ambient kit. Got to make sure that that's working. So I'm going to go ahead and kill this thing. And we got to go find our second unit. All right, so here's our second unit. It's not running, but I can hear it buzzing. So we need to see what's up with that. And it's super hot. All right, so our contactor's pulled in, so we'll go ahead and check our run cap. And then uh, we'll see if there's any voltage once we get all that. We're gonna clean out all this cobwebs first and get it all clean. So Checking here we go. our run cap, it's a 70 for the compressor and a 10 for the fan. So we're at 71.5, so compressor size side is good. We're gonna check our fan side now, which is supposed to be at 10. And it is like at 10. So we may have an issue with the condenser fan motor. Um, so usually the fan motor fails. Uh, then uh, when the fan motor fails, the compressor overheats. So it might be on thermal overload. We're gonna go double check that uh, just see if we have an open line. So, let's so what you that. wanna do is you wanna go from start to common, run to common. If it's an open line, then that means it's on thermal overload. So we're gonna do, uh, so generally that's black. For, so this is a carrier product. So black is going to be your common, yellow is going to be your run, uh, and then blue is your start, which goes on the run cap. That's how you always know. So anyway, we're going to go common to run, and you can see here we have an open line. See? And then if we go common to start, which is this guy right here, bear with me while I do this one-handed, and we got an open line. So. Um, now if we go start, if we go start to run, we should have continuity, um, which means that, you know, that, that confirms that our windings are not, you know, open. So we go start to run, and you can see here we have continuity. So uh, it's on a thermal overload. So one of the things you can do to cool it down faster is you can just pour water on top of the compressor until, and then just, you know, put some clamps on this. And then once you get a reading between common and start or common and run, you know it reset. But I suspect that the condenser fan motor failed uh, and then caused the compressor to overheat. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, test that. So I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to go ahead and put my amp clamp on the condenser fan motor. And I'm gonna leave the compressor out of the circuit so it can cool off because the entire time it's receiving power, it's constantly keeping it hot. So it's gonna take forever for it to reset. Uh, and then another thing too, is we wanna make sure that it's not locked up. So. We're gonna go ahead and see if we can spin it. So it seems to spin freely. So I just suspect that the motor's dead. Uh, if we check this, you can see that the motor is over 140 degrees. So more than likely it's overheated. Um, so it might also be on thermal overload. So we're gonna go ahead and check those things. We got our condenser fan motor wires. So this is all our compressor stuff. So that's out of the way. So we have three wires on a carrier. It's gonna be black, brown, and yellow. So black is your common, yellow is your run, and this is the brown is your start. So pretty much whatever wire is going into the capacitor is always your start, okay? Uh, so we're gonna go continuity between our common and we'll go ahead and do this run wire here. And we got nothing. All right, and we're gonna go ahead and go to start. So common to start. So you can see that we're checking this exactly the way we would a compressor. Okay, so common to uh, start, I do have a uh, reading, but it's like very, very tiny. So we're gonna check start to run. Make sure you don't touch the metal with your fingers because it will change your readings. So yeah, so start to run, it's open. So there's the motor's dead. All right, so there's no ifs, ands, or buts. It's totally dead. Um, we'll go ahead and power it up and show you what it does. Um, and then we'll get an amp reading on it. And we're gonna leave the compressor out of the circuit, that way it can reset. All right, we're, we have the compressor disconnected, fans connected. We're gonna go ahead and power it up. And you can see nothing happened. And we do have 1.2 amps. On max, I just wanted to see what our start is. So it's holding 1.2 and it's not spinning. And that's because our windings are open. So it's not producing the electromagnetic force or field to cause the fan to spin. 
So we need to change out that condenser fan motor. So we're gonna see if we have one on the truck. Hopefully we do. And then we gotta go find the person and get approval on that one and go from there. So when you're changing out these uh, condenser fan motors, you need to know a couple things. We wanna know, uh, obviously the voltage. So it's gonna be 208, 240. Uh, but we need to know RPM. So this was an 825. And you can see that it's like right there on the side of the, the, the motor. Usually you can find this info. Um, so it's 825 and our horsepower. Uh, oh, interesting. So <laughs> it requires a capacitor of 7.5 and it's using a 10. So, um, but anyway, I thought that's funny. So anyway, we got to see what our horsepower is. One quarter, quarter horse. So you can see it's right there. So we need to know our RPMs, our voltage and our uh, horsepower. And then we also want to look at the run cap because we may have to change it and we're definitely going to change it because this run cap's way too high for it. Uh, and then also, um, we want to look at our amp. So it's a 1.2. So we want to try to keep it around the same if we can. So uh, we're out in the middle of nowhere. So whatever's in the truck that's 825 is probably what I'm going to use because I'm pretty sure I have an 825. In fact, I think I have two of them. So we're going to go ahead and go find the person, get this approved, and then we'll go from there. So we're in the truck, it looks like I do have one. So this one's good for an eighth, a sixth, a fifth, a quarter, a th one third, 208, 230, one speed, 825 RPMs. Uh, we need quarter horse, it's gonna be at 1.6 amps, which is close. It's not perfect, but it's close enough. Um, and this is gonna require a 10 microfarad uh, capacitor. So we could actually reuse the one we have in there. I really like to put new ones in there, but I don't think I have a 7010. So we'll probably just end up reusing it. I don't know, we'll see. All right, so there's the lazy way and the proper way of doing it. I'm gonna do it the lazy way because I'm being lazy and it's hot out here. Uh, so basically we're gonna take the cage off and then pull it out. The proper way is to actually take the entire lid off, but I guess it doesn't really matter. You just, when you do it this way, you gotta be very careful that you don't get the blades caught on the edges because uh, you can bend it. So it's, I guess you could say it's the, not necessarily the lazy way, but it's the, well, it is a lazy way, but it's more risky too. If you pull the whole thing off, you don't have to worry about that, but uh, we're gonna be risky, so here we go. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and spray a little WD-40 on here. If we're lucky, we won't have to use the fan puller. And we're gonna go ahead and loosen the, uh, whatchamacallit, the set screw. And if you look at the threads, you can tell which way you need to turn it. So I am wanna actually pull this towards me. So we're gonna do so. I'm so skilled I can do it one-handed. Oh yeah. Yeah. Trying to hold a camera and do this one-handed is a very difficult thing to do. All right, hey, look at that, it just popped off. I did that one-handed. All right, cool. Another thing we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and twist this off. Uh, you're gonna turn this, uh, I guess it's clockwise. Yeah, see, because it's got a little thing. Slide that out. And now all we gotta do is take off those bolts. All right, so these are 7 uh nuts, I guess you could say. Yeah, so if you have a nut driver that's a 7 like a deep one, or even like a socket, you should be good. But uh, all I have is this. So I like to loosen them first, and then we'll go ahead and put this down. Can use our ratcheting once it once they come out but basically with these you just need to get them loose and then you just kind of hand loosen them and they just kind of pop off so not too difficult it's it's so annoying when you have a brand new motor and you find that these are bent i have to be very careful about bending these back because they could snap off and if that happens the motor is useless so uh, i do have another motor so basically um if these snap off, I'll probably just steal the bolts from the other motor and then take these out and put it on. Because the other motor is a 1075. This is my only 825, so yeah. So hopefully, hopefully it doesn't break. So let me try that. Well, I got them as straight as I could. And none of them snapped off, so that's a good sign. Uh, now with these universal motors, uh, this one's going to be facing downward like this, you know. So there's a plug on each side. There's one there and there's one here. So if this 
motor was mounting upward like this, uh, we would leave that one on and take off the one in the back. But since it's mounting downward like that, we're gonna leave this one on and we're gonna pull this one out. And this is just in case moisture gets in there so it can drain out. So there we go. So don't forget to do that. All right, so we're gonna just go over the wiring of this. So um, our old motor was a three wire hookup, right? So the difference is, is we have this brown white wire, right? So this is, this black ones are common. The solid brown is our start. And this white one is our run, okay? So what the heck is this? So what are you gonna do? You are, you have, you're gonna do, you're gonna add a run cap to it. So now you're gonna split it where you, there's two run caps instead of one dual. Well, what if I told you that didn't matter, okay? So this brown white wire and this white wire are exactly the same. So I'm ohming, or I'm actually doing continuity across the brown white and the white. You can see it's exactly the same wire. So if you want to do a three wire hookup, all you have to do is you can use a dual run cap. You'd hook everything up. So you'd use your black would go on your common side of the contactor. Your solid brown would go on fan of the dual capacitor and your white wire would go on the other side of the contactor. And then this guy, you just chop off the end and uh, zip tie it up and cap it. And that's it. You don't have to add a run cap. You could just use a dual run cap. So it drives me nuts when people, you, you have a dual run cap that's bad and then, um, or you have like where both sides are bad and then you put two separate run caps. Well, why, just use a dual. You know, and you can test it pretty much if you all out these two and you got like zero continuity practically, or I'm sorry, uh, you know, low, low uh, ohms. It's basically it's wire nut, it's, it's on the same circuit, so it doesn't really matter. So, um, and if you don't have this, you could actually add a second capacitor. All you would do is you would put your brown on one side of the capacitor, and then you'd run another wire on the other side of the capacitor back to the contactor on the opposite side of your common wire, and that'll work too. So yeah, I just thought I'd say that. So anyway, yeah. All right, so I ended up using the ones that it came with. They're uh, 11 32nd, uh, so have that wrench available uh, or socket if you have. I'm gonna leave these out. I'm not gonna cut them off uh, just because I usually I'll bend and break them off, but I just don't wanna risk damaging these anymore because they're bent. Uh, but we'll put the original bolts on top just so they're there in case we have to change the motor again in the future. So the next thing we want to do is we want to figure out where our fan is going to go. So pretty much, uh, if we put our old motor next to the new one, it's going to go to about there. So we're going to mark it, and then we'll try to put our fan blade in the exact same spot, as close as you can. And then also, in some cases, this might be too long. You might have to chop it because sometimes it'll hit the top of the compressor. And that's a bad thing. So... Uh, I think we're okay on this one, but keep in mind that sometimes you have to chop off part of the shaft to make it fit. So, yep. All right, so we got her lined up with our mark. I don't know if, you, if that shows, but there's a mark there. And then we want to see which way we need this to spin because universal motors, they spin in different ways, so we might have to change it. Now, if we look, that it's going to spin this way, which is counterclockwise. And you can tell that by looking at the shape of the blade. See how it goes down? So that means air is going to go here and go down. So it's gonna push out of the top, right? So that means it's gonna spin this way. Now, if we look at, this, at the schematic here, you can see here CCW, that's counterclockwise. So that means it's gonna be, uh, what is that? Uh, yellow to purple and brown to orange. So our wire here is brown to orange, yellow to purple, so it's already set for counterclockwise. We're gonna put a zip tie to kind of hold these out of the way so they don't get sliced up by the fan. So we should be good to go. All right, so let's go ahead and get this thing installed. So you can see here we have our white wire here on the bottom because that's where the original one was. Uh, we have our, so the white one is our run. This is our common right here. I'm sorry, right here. And then we have our fan connector. And then the brown white, I've capped it off. And it's just zip tied out of the way. That way it doesn't short on nothing. And so we're gonna go ahead and um, turn on the unit. We're gonna go ahead and measure our start amps on our on our compressor make sure there's nothing wrong with that and we're going to make sure that our fan is spinning the correct way because sometimes uh we could be wrong on that so that could have actually been a court so some of them consider it on the top of the motor not the shaft side but the opposite side so we'll see but usually it's the shaft side so we'll find out real quick here we go so we're going to power it up so fire in the hole 
All right, fan is spinning, compressor is running. Our amps are good. It's spinning the wrong way. So we'll go ahead and flip it. Apparently, Mars Motors considers this the top, so it would be clockwise if it's supposed to go that way, right? Am I right? Yeah, so it's spinning the wrong way. So I guess Mars Motors consider it from the top of the motor, so the, the non-shaft side. So then this, that means that this motor needs to spin clockwise, because as you can see here, it's spinning the wrong way. We want it to go this way, so it scoops the air up. We swapped the uh, direction, so now it's clockwise based off of the top, the back side of it, the non-shaft side. So, yeah, now it should spin the right way. So let's try this again. So, fire in the hole. There we go, now it's spinning the correct direction. So yeah, air should be blowing off the top. So we're gonna let this thing run for a little while and see uh, if she cools down. So anyway, that's how we uh, replace the condenser fan motor and diagnose it. So thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe, comment, tell me what a horrible technician I am. Hit that bell notification, follow me on Instagram and Facebook. Thanks for watching.